National Poetry Month greetings from the New York Society Library. It's our pleasure to present these readings by Charlie Smith from his new poetry collection, Demo. For more about the book, to buy a copy, or to support events like this, visit our website, nysoclib.org, and search for Demo. Enjoy. This water tastes of iron. My tattoos tell love story in miniature, which I prefer. My dips in style, the picture I painted on a pool cover, express a reckless calm, unsubstantiated, but plush. I pray to the ticking sound I hear at night. Breezes shaped in Africa remind me of friends buried in the sea. For years, I lived in a home for the blind, working the semaphore. My over-obvious rectitude bought only time. Let's drain the dark, she said, from every room. The mottos on the radio scratch lately at my door, unverifiable and hilarious. The past sinks like a body in a well. I read the Bible for the stakeouts and descriptions of terrain. Issues with the right hand turn. Sometimes I'm issued a new head and the old one drops off and then I see the new one isn't new. It's a used head, sometimes a bit moldy or flushed with rage. This head filled with notes on what is wrong with the world or carrying a list of expendables or groceries a head that remembers sunset casting a golden shine into the wheat or the painting of a pig on a dinner plate or once i got a head filled with memories of snowy nights when she dared me to love her but i couldn't speak the part and had to set this head down beside the road and go on for the rest of that episode headless heedless, one you couldn't hang for his crimes if you wanted to. Here, dog. You say dogs prefer the smell of the people they love and say everyone, even whole groups, according to what they eat and how they are arranged emit a typical smell that do their dogs can recognize. And the way they look contributes to this and how they move like ponies crashing through bamboo or crushed souls fleeing midnight rooms. And rarely do dogs, if ever, get mixed up about this. They're always on the lookout as night enters the ancient streets without signs or balustrades, wound with roses and you say the dogs are here, standing stiff-legged by the hedge or writhing in happiness. And you, sweating or stinking of an angry lover's perfume, are recognizable and taken in. A wanderer, troubled or excised from the rolls, resentful or nervous about money. The dog has put you under his wing and hurries you into the familiar Estancia, with a love that can't be lost or beaten out of him as it has been lost and beaten out of you. Why harp on it? In the stillness of dawn, when the air hangs back and you plunge your hand into the bottomless dark of a jasmine bush. When roosters crack the day open under a slurry sky and you've forgotten why you're awake and don't know why you're thinking of the time you gave the go-ahead for your mother's shock treatments and she came out blank and ironical, unable to squeeze orange juice. And you poured her a drink and she said, 
Thank you. I am very tired. And you were moving to Sioux City and didn't have time to say goodbye. And for a couple of years, lived in a motel and ate Chinese mechs and supported a young car hop who needed the money for her rattled child. And you'd wake at dawn with your deepest bones aching like you'd gotten old before your time. And there was no way to be sure of anything. And red gazelles, atlas bears, heath hens, blue wall eyes, thick-tailed chubs, sea minks, dire wolves, catahoula salamanders, and Xerxes blue butterflies were already gone from the earth. Adirondack. Something's falling in increments of banging and slight popping clunks and then little chittering rolls. The roof, I mean, is being hit by objects, nuts, fruits of the season. This miserable natural world hurls these things. And then there are the wolf howls, or coyotes as they call them here, and the barks and snuffles of so-called bears. And yesterday I saw a small tub-bottomed bishop crossing the road on all fours, porcupine, they said, and crows strut, and there are these mincing deer so theatrically bold, and turkeys like drab bloated chickens, and tiny bronze frogs singing in my shoes. And last night, as in the car, I huddled over a radio broadcast, the stars lit up in uncanny formations, bright pegs, pictures of my tormentors and ex-wives seemed to hang from, and I showed them the frogs, shiny as coins of the Caesars. Sob story. Actual tottering that takes place late in the season the recently capsized trees, lindens arranged so they protect the settlements, the cities, the oaks slowly giving in to paralysis, the uncultivated elms never touched in certain places, the cumbersome loosely arranged willows down by the pond, illusions sputtering. It's time for the weather report that haunts us like a death certificate the icterious following, like tiny rabbits blowing everything on lunch, a tidiness in the faltering clouds we've seen before, longing calling a substitute to take over the last bit of wallowing, we'll recall on closed up nights when the stars, like spittle, stuck to your shirt, beckons in what looks like a new way, speaking in a new way of dust and alarms, playing tunes you remember from childhood. Volto, a spatial infirmity, what's closed up like a child in a closet, calls too softly to be heard. Like the little stream with the broken back, that behind the barn collects the bitter runoff. A specialized sky foretells the fall of humankind. Clouds like saggy diasporas. The fields flex their big muscles, getting ready for the stare down with the stars. It's winter, then summer comes, perfumed with toiletries. Raspberries bend quadrate branches the fruit like children about to swing into eternity. I'm limited, she says, but not alarmed and ineffectively violent. Sometimes we block love like dump trucks on strike at the kiln. The closed off future taps at the window. It's the echo that's scary. Suffering 
completes its tax return, listing no dependents. The papered over bits have shifted in the night. Grim looks grimness in the eye. The dead taste of salt. At the sight, tiny storms rage among the balled up dresses. Someone's heart split open and used for a mask. Sounds like love, says the mayor, but then to me, everything does. This far will do. The coast along here smells like a rusty washing machine still in use. The sudsy clouds are in on this. The sharks and flounders know what's going on. Old plaques and busted dance floors teeter among brushy trash. Discolored boilers filled with bullet holes rest like blue whales in the spit-colored sand. You can't walk 10 feet without having to crawl over something. Skate eggs shrivel in gray sunlight. Slithers of sea lettuce rot. The meaning of the world is in plain sight. Crabs line up to turn themselves in. Three hots and a cot would do fine. Redfish belch and puke up supper. The fix is in. Everybody knows this. We're beyond catastrophe, says the cod. You could go on forever, but why bother? Counting on my fingers. Snow day for the soul, she says, and pulls out her list of plants that thrive in winter. Hemlock, pines, firs, shimmering in sunlight, evergreen live oaks, ilex, laurel, and camellias, boxwood, holly, the stiff drapes of mahonia, represented as colorful on snowy days when trains pant lonely on suburban tracks and the old men press their faces against loved ones like representatives of a culture that could kill you easily. Juniper and Daphne, she says. Okaba, the streaked, stiff leaves of moonshadow. Hemlock, cedar on the path down to the beach where a girl was murdered. Cyanathus, hoarding blue puffballs. Pyracantha, thorn, putting out the eye of a child. Everywhere you look, something bearing down. Arbutus, bottle brush, rhododendron, once in the mountains, viburnum, we slept under, she says, and I remember that time like a rent in my heart. Crostatas. In Rome, I got down among the weeds and tiny perfumed flowers like eyeballs dabbed in blood. And the big ruins said, do it my way, pal. While starlings kept offering showbiz solutions. And well, the Vatican pursued its interests. The palm trees like singular affidavits. The wind succinct and the mountains painted blue just before dawn accelerated at the last point of departure, before the big illuminated structures dug up from the basement got going. And I ate crostatas for breakfast and on the terrace chatted with the clay-faced old man next door and said I was after a woman who'd left me years ago. And he said, Lord, aren't we all? From Heine, where will I lie in the by and by? Where will I lie? In fresh snow, under northern lights, permafrosted, in a stony field? In a desert hole 
of mixed borax and sandstone dust, with a few dozen others tossed in a pit after a friendly fire massacre, or slumped untended on a weary slog from one unsuitable home to the next, ex-animate and overlooked. Anyhow, the whole pollocky, skittish harangue of comets and scurly planet types, space dust and infinite jitters will surround me, lamps of eluded paradise, 